Hey everybody, um, it is Thursday, April the 23rd. I am glad that you've rejoined me for the finale of Little Red Hot to find out what's gonna go on with the wolf and Little Red Hot. Let's see. We left off yesterday where Little Red Hot hollered, hold it right there, don't you come any closer. I know who you are and you're Senor Lobo. Poco Spill, warn me about you. Let's see what happens. The big gray animal stopped running. You got me all wrong, miss, he said. I'm not Senor Lobo, I'm Senor Coyote. I may be tricky, but I wanted her to fly. You're mighty big for a coyote, Little Red Hot said. You're a mighty smart little girl and pretty too. Where are you going? I'm go- <clears throat> Little Red Hot. I'm going to visit my grandma. She's feeling poorly, said Little Red Hot. What a good little girl you are. You tell your grandma I hope she feels better. And off he went. Should you tell strangers where you're going? No. No, no, no. Of course, that big gray animal wasn't Senor Coyote at all. It was Senor Lobo. And Little Red Hot had no business talking to him. But it was too late to do anything about that now. Even worse, Senor Lobo knew a shortcut that took him straight to Grandma's house. He stepped up to the front door and knocked. There he goes. There's poor Grandma. Little Red Hot, is that you? Grandma said. Senor Lobo made his voice sound like Little Red, like Little Red Hot. Yes, Granny, I heard you. You were sick. I hope you're feeling better. I feel better already now that you're here. Come on in. Oh, look at the little sweet cat on Granny's bed. Senor Lobo did just that. Grandma let out a yelp when she saw him. Grandma was sick. But she wasn't slow. She jumped out of that window and ran. Good for you, Grandma. I'll catch her later, Senor Lobo said. He rummaged through Grandma's clothes until he found a spare nightcap and nightgown. He put them on and hopped into bed just a little, just as Little Red Hot arrived. Howdy, Grandma. It's Little Red Hot. I'm sorry you don't feel good. Why is your front door open? To let in the breeze, darling, to let in the breeze, Senor Lobo said. I brought you a surprise, Grandma. Little Red Hot went into the kitchen. She cut a big wedge of hot pepper pie and put it on a plate. She carried it to Grandma's bedroom. Senor Lobo lay on the bed with the covers pulled up to his nose. Little Red looked at him real hard. Grandma, what big eyes you got. The better to see you with, darling. Senor Lobo said. Grandma, what big ears you got. The better to hear you with, darling, Senor Lobo said. Grandma, what big teeth you got. Now don't say another word, cause I know what they're for, said Little Red Hot. What are they for, darling, Senor Lobo asked. They're for eating this hot pepper pie. I made it just for you, Little Red Hot. Shove that wedge of pie into Senor Lobo's mouth. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be too hot for him? To say he yelled wouldn't do him justice. He hollered so loud space aliens could have heard him over in the next galaxy. He didn't go out the front or the back. He shot straight up like a rocket right through the ceiling of Grandma's bedroom, trailing fire and smoke as he went. That's when Pecos Bill and the Cowboys arrived. Grandma told us Senor Lobo came by. Where is he? Little Red Hot pointed up at the hole in the ceiling. He went that away. I don't suppose he'll be back. Would y'all like to stay for supper? I got hot pepper pie for everyone. No thanks, Little Red Hot, Pecos Bill and the Cowboys said. We're brave, all right, but not that brave. So, Little Red Hot and her grandma ate that hot pepper pie all by themselves, every last crumb, and guess what? It knocked those cold germs flat out, just as Little Red Hot had promised. Man, I wish when you're sick you just have to eat something hot and spicy and knock it out, because I eat something hot and spicy about every day. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow.